Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be covering Stanford Alpaca project. Uh, I think it's a very pretty neat project that we should look into. Especially I like the technique uh, self-instruct given how, how how difficult it can be or how expensive it can be to get uh, annotators to label the data. So like I really appreciate some of these uh, techniques that they used in, in this case. So we're going to go through the code as usual and I'll try by all means to explain each line of code intuitively in such a way that by the end of the video, you guys actually get to understand some of the main ideas and some of the implementation that they did within this project. So uh, the idea is quite simple is that we have like some of the instructions that are predefined or that generated by humans it could be small, something like 175. Then we're going to prompt the text DaVinci. So you can think of this as like a very powerful model that can generate uh, very, very good text. So this model in this case is text DaVinci 003. So given these self instructions that the humans have generated, then it's going to generate pretty much similar high quality instructions that the humans, you know, have generated, right? And this is going to give us something like 152k instructions following examples. Now that we have like a pretty solid uh, instructions, like very, very loud instructions, then we can use these instructions to fine tune our pre-trained model. In this case, it's this uh, LALAMA 7 billion uh, parameter model um, that was produced by Meta. Then we're going to fine tune and we're going to get this uh, Alpaca 7 billion model, right? So the idea is not that difficult, right? It's, it's pretty neat and it's pretty simple to kind of like follow as you will see in the code. Uh, that it's just, it's just the same thing that I just explained here. So uh, without wasting any time, uh, let's get into it and see see how they were able to pretty much like generate these uh, 52K from the code perspective in an efficient way. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, just to brief you on how things will go, essentially we're going to start with uh, this generate instruction code. So this code essentially, it will lead us to these other files. So you can think of this as like the main code that we have to start with because of it's gonna lead us to these other files. So I think starting here, it's gonna be quite good. Um, then these other functions also, I think they're getting called in the main function. So if we start with the main function, essentially we can then um, branch out to these functions to understand and get a much better context. So this is just a 219 line of code. So it's not that bad. So I think we can actually be able to cover this. So what do we have here in this uh, generate instruction following data? So essentially this file, it has to call the uh, OpenAI uh, API. Um, so there's going to be another file that does that, but essentially it's, it's this is like the main function that has to generate the data. Uh, they also call it machine generated data in this case. Um, so then the data that is being generated is going to be uh, outputted in this output directory. Then we're going to need a seed file. So this is like the file that I was talking about, which is going to be the human generated uh, data. So uh, just to show you how it looks like, we have um, this is how the, the, this file looks like. So we have these instructions and within these instructions, we have uh, we have inputs. This is not necessarily always given, but there are, there are places where it's given. Then we have outputs, right? Then we have uh, its classification. In this project, they did not use this its classification. Like I said, this data was 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 um, was taken from the self instruct uh, project. So uh, in that project, I think they used that its classification. But in this case, they did not use it. So what do we see here is that you have this instructions, then you have this um, outputs, you have this inputs. So what are the the cases whereby we use input is the cases whereby we need some sort of like context or we have some sort of like examples that the model has to select from. For, for example, let's say we have like something like what is the relationship between the given pair. So in the input, we're going to have those like uh, those pairs that, that, that we're trying to get the relations from. Then the model will then use that input to know which uh, how it has to generate it. 
but in this case all of this was written by humans right and if we scroll down you can see that this is 175 so that's why they said that it was 175 uh, seed generated data so that's what we're getting from here then this is like the number of instruction we need to generate uh, using the text type in G uh, model then this is the model uh, ID that we we we're gonna pass in our um, op, uh, what is it open AI API then this is like the number of prompt instructions so we need to uh, give some sort of like a seed of a seed some sort of like example to to the to the open AI uh, model as our prompt so for each request we're gonna give it three we're gonna see the how we we, we sample from that right then we have this request batch which is going to be five then we have these temperatures and top p so this is just the sampling parameters uh so they help us to to set how diverse and how creative the model should be then we have this number of cpu okay then what we do is that from that from the file that i just showed you this uh seed task uh essentially we try to get the instruction we try to get the input and the output that's what we're interested in and we create this um this dictionary or an object of instruction inputs and we're going to create a list so you can think of here we have 175 of instructions inputs and outputs uh in this format of a dictionary inside here okay um we're gonna get the length of these which we know that this is going to be 175 because that's what we worked on then this request id i think is going to keep track of the request that we're making to the to open ai so we're going to see that um when we start i don't think this code will run but essentially this code check if like we have generated our data so far uh so essentially we can think of this as like the data that has been generated by uh text da vinci like open ai model but in this case, when we start, we know that this uh, this uh, this path won't exist, as we can see in our uh, root directory that there's nothing called region.json in this case. And I'm thinking that this region.json has been renamed to alpaca data.json, but we're gonna get into the the output in a, in a second. Then we have this uh, similarity score. So uh, essentially, you can think of this as like this more this function is going to take like uh, text and it's going to check how similar they are. So the goal here is to discard any of the instructions that the model has generated and they have like high similarities. So we want like distinct instructions in this case. So this uh, score is going to be able to uh, help us to accomplish that. Then we, uh, this is just to tracking. So, um, then what we do here is that we're going to take the machine generated data if we did have this machine generated data then we're just gonna uh we're just gonna add it with the instruction from the seeded instructions right so we have this machine instruction data that is coming from the uh the text da vinci then we have this seed instruction data that is going to be coming from the human so this is the seeded data but in this case, we know that this machine data has not been generated yet. So we only have this seed instruction data. Then we call this all instructions. Okay. Um, we're going to create tokens. In, in this case, we're going to call these all instruction tokens. We're going to be using this um, this function that is coming from this uh, this this uh, imports of ROG scorer to tokenize our instructions then we're gonna say when the length of the machine instructions is less than the number of instructions to generate so we want to make sure that we generate instruction for this number uh, in this case this is just the past parameter in this case it's just uh where is it it's going to be 100. so as long as we haven't reached that so we're just going to continue the loop then we're going to increase increase our request um then what you're seeing here is that we're gonna sample right uh we're gonna sample from our seed instruction data so essentially here we're gonna sample the number of prompt instruction i think in this case it's gonna be three right and uh just to make a good example so we have this seed instruction data 
so we have these instructions input and input output right and we're gonna select three of those right just for visualization so you can think of like we're taking three instructions like we this is one this is two this is three right from from here um where is it from here so essentially you can think of this as like we have a we have a list of a dictionary and each dictionary is going to be having instructions and it's going to be uh instruction it's going to having output and it's going to be having uh input so right and we're going to have three of those because of that's like the number from instructions does that make sense then we pass these three instructions into this encode prompt okay so what does this encode prompt does so this is the function that we jumped so we take this prompt instruction which we know it's a list of dictionary and that's why here the author called it tax dictionary so it makes sense right so what we do in this case we know that this tax dictionary has instruction input and output right we just made that example so we get those out for each for loop, like for each looping then we gonna strip um we're gonna strip uh lines and we're gonna strip this colon then we're gonna strip all the white spaces from this instruction so we pretty much clean in our instruction uh data then the input like i said that the input can be can be null right i showed you in this case uh, just to show you again so if we go to the left i'm just gonna use this so the instruction is not always given right it's like for instance it can be empty so what we do is that when it's empty we essentially gonna return no input else we're just gonna return input like so right so uh what do we do is that we take this prompt which i'm gonna open because we're opening it prompt.txt so this is what we're gonna give to the um, open ai model so you can see that we have these instructions to the model. So these these instructions are like try not to repeat the verb of each instruction. So it's it's pretty much like instruction to like you, you should be using English. You know, uh, we'll be telling the model things that it should do and things that it shouldn't do. So this this is what we're doing. But we take this and then what we do is that we essentially going to append all of this. Um, all of these instructions that we're getting right so you can think of here we we, we just like uh, because of this new line here so you can think of here we're just going to create new line like so and then we just gonna say uh create this a new line so we can think of here we're just going to have something like this and we create new line then we can think of this as we just going to create index which is going to be zero plus one so that's going to be one then we take instruction then we write the instruction inside this case so here we can think of like we have one uh, instruction then we have this then we write our instruction here right so we do the same thing with um actually this is going to be one sorry so it's going to be one because we have inputs and output so we do the same thing here so it's going to be input uh, also, it's going to be input, and we're going to have one, and this is going to be output, like so, and this is going to be output, like so. Then, because of we looping through three times, we know because of this prompt, uh, we know that this prompt instruction is three, so we end up having these um, at the end of each loop. Um, we have this output, and we create this new line, so we can think of here, we're going to create a new line then we're gonna do something like that i think because if we're going through the next looping and we're gonna create this new uh instructions yeah even this so yeah i'm just gonna create that so i think it's gonna be something like uh something like this. so but i hope you guys get the idea you know um the, the main goal is just to kind of like give you the idea so we're gonna create instructions like so but when we're done essentially we're gonna create another triple hash next line then we say index plus two it makes sense for us to say index plus two because of uh we can think of like we're gonna start with one 
uh, the reason I'm saying one is because we add one instead of like zero. So this is going to be one, this is going to be um, two, this is going to be three. So we take this index because of this is going to be two, uh, we add these two, so it's going to be four. So uh, here by the end of, by when we're done, like going through all of them, we're going to have four dot instruction. So it's going to be something like four dot instruction, like so, and it's going to create a new line, right? Like so, that's what this code will do, and we're going to return our prompt. So the model will know that, okay, I have to continue and like so, but that's, that's what I think it's going to do, right? Uh, I hope you guys get the, the idea in this case. So uh, let's continue uh, with the, with the code where we, we were here. So we encode it. Then what we do is that we say batch inputs equals to prompt. So we call these to be batch. So it's, that's like the first batch. Uh, that we're gonna go through, okay? Then we loop through again, right? How many pairs do we have? So we have uh, five. So we can think of like, we're gonna create, um, we're gonna create a list of 20 tasks. Is that correct? You are asked to come up with 20 diverse task instructions, yes. So we're gonna create 20 tasks. So 20 by five is gonna be 100. So we're generating 100. Of, of like of like um, tasks that have to be generated, right? So that's what I think this will do. Then it's gonna be inside this patch. Does that make sense? Right. I hope it does, guys. Um, yeah. Let's continue then. So we have these uh, decoding arguments uh, that will be passed into our OpenAI API. These include things such as uh, the stopping criteria. So if we get to twenty, then we're gonna stop. Uh, then we have this maximum tokens. We can pass these number of tokens and we have these stop uh, P and temperatures uh, for diversity and creativity of the model outputs. Uh, then we pull these uh, open AI completion. So this will be called from this utility, right? And this is essentially is the magic that is just gener generate text for us or should I say instruction. I'm just going to open it here. So uh, what we have for, before we go to it, I just want to show you that we give it the batch input, we give it the model name, the request batch size, which we said it was five. Uh, just to verify, uh, yes, it was five. So this is going to be called batch size. Then we have these decoding arguments, which are coming from here and logit pass, which is gonna prevent the end of token being generated, then that's fine. Uh, what do we do in this function, which is called dev, before we start there, uh, let me start from the top. We have this data class, which is also holding the default uh, uh, arguments uh, that we should give to the OpenAI API. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna cover these. What do we have here? Uh, these are just self-explanatory because of, you can see that if we only have a single prompt, we're just gonna pass that prompt inside a list and we shouldn't have maximum batch, shouldn't exceed the system maximum length. So that's fine. So the interesting part, I think it starts here and going below. So what we do in this case uh, is that we gonna get the, uh, the length of them, of the prompt. So you can think of this as like, we getting there number of batch like batch inputs and we're getting the length of that how many length of we have inside there um then we just gonna take that and divide it by the by the batch size so which makes sense right so you can think of what we're doing here is that we're literally doing what we're trying to do in this for loop in this for loop we generated a batch so we we went through this for loop and we sampled three instructions. Then we uploaded this inside this batch input. So now we are literally, uh, where's that code? Yeah, there is it here. So now we're literally doing the same thing. We're literally taking that 
uh, by creating a list of those prompt but in a batch format so that's why here we take the number of, pr of prompts and divide it by the batch size right and then this code is just to sample that so it's going to be sampling from that prompt just so let's say extract maybe the sampling is not the right way to use but yeah it, it kind of like extract the the, the 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 size the right size uh, as, as we as we loop through here but you can think of this as just going to contain a list uh, a list of these right uh, yeah a list of these because they're inside this list is it a list uh, just to make sure because of prompt I just want to make sure guys that it's really working with the list of yeah it's a list because of this is what we have here and this is what we are pending inside here so that's fine um we have this completion list so i this is will be the the text that we generated and this is what we're gonna be we're gonna have to return by the end of this uh for loop and this while loop we're gonna actually have to append so obviously we're gonna append or extend um text inside there that has been generated by open ai api so what we do is that we're looping through um the prompt batches which is inside here so you can think of the here we're getting the prompt batch um uh i think here we're cloning the decoding arguments then we're gonna pass this prompt batch right inside this open ai api so this is gonna generate the text I don't know if you guys have worked with OpenAI API, but essentially I've made example here and I uploaded the image here. So you can call an API and it's gonna return like the results like so. So it has this choices. Inside this choices is a list and you have this dictionary whereby you can get the text, which is the output of the model. So this was just an example, just so that they give you guys some con context of what the results look like. So this is like you you look uh, something that looks like. So in this case, what we're looking at is that this completion batch is going to take all of these choices right from this, and we have these choices, and we know that these choices contain of things such as text, index, log prop, finish raising, all right, something like that. Um, then we're gonna loop through this choices because of the choices is a dictionary so what we're doing here is that we're creating a key in that we just going to assign it to the total tokens so this is, is a key that's going to be used somewhere then we're just appending the choices to the completion results that's what it is right so i'm just going to take a pause here just to remind you what is being generated here right so that like i'm not losing you with my explanation so let's open this uh, alpaca data. I think I've never showed you this um, because of, so it's generating something like this. That's what the model is gonna generate. So it's generating like instructions, input, output, something like this. So, but it's generating it. Um, obviously we have to clean it. It's, it's not necessary. This is like the final output. I'm showing you the final output, but we all know that we have to clean it, right? Because uh, if we take a look at the, um, the prompt text. I showed you how we 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 are doing this. I showed you like all of those one thing and instruction and all of that, right? I showed you when we started this, and essentially I told you that the model will then continue from three all the way to twenty, and that's what it will do, right? And I showed you this. I hope you still remember. So, but it's going to generate those things, and it's going to have like these instruction output and. Or input and output that's what it's going to do right uh, i just wanted to remind you of that so that you get to understand what we essentially um inserting inside here so yeah we have these choices which is dictionary and we keep on appending this dictionary inside here right um that's that i think this is just to handle like errors you know open ai they sometimes can like literally uh if you are like making a lot of requests then they can literally uh rate limit you so you have to handle those uh those uh rate limiting errors that can pop up so i think that's what this code does right so yeah uh then return text we're gonna get this text like i showed you in the example image 
because of the dictionary, you can access this text by saying choices.txt, then you're gonna get the text that has been generated by the model, then that's what you're gonna get from the completion. And if the decoding argument is greater than one, that's what you're gonna do. But anyway, we, we're just gonna return the text. So this is gonna be all the instructions that the model has generated for this given batch. I hope that makes sense. Now your question might be, okay, we're given that, then what do we do? So let's go back to the generate instruction and continue. Um, because now we have an idea of what this results contain, right? Um, so now let's just continue. So we're gonna loop through our results. Uh, so we're gonna get a dictionary here in which we're gonna pass it through the post process GP3 response function alongside with the number of prompt instruction, which is this was three. So now let's take a look at what this function does. So this function, essentially, it's going to split the instruction, the row instruction by this ray hash. If you can still remember correctly, uh, we had this three hash. That means before we generate the instruction input and output, we had this three hash. So what will then this do is that it will then split that, then we're gonna have these instruction input and output inside the list. Uh, just to remind you, we created 20 of these. So yes, it is 20, but obviously we know that three was just, um, what, what is the seed? Uh, so that, that was that, right? But now we're gonna split by this. So we're gonna get individual instruction input and output uh, is one thing. I uh, hope that makes sense. Then we're gonna loop through the raw instruction. So you can imagine that we get in this instruction input and output individually this time. Um, we check if uh, this is like the last element or if like the response equals to finished. Uh, this is because if it is finished, it's more likely to be truncated. So we don't want that. Be. So we, we would rather like uh, discard it from our, from our results. Uh, then here, what we do is that we gonna take the ID, which is when we start to loop, it's gonna be zero. We're gonna add it by the number of his respond, which is three plus one, which is four. So here we're gonna pass four and we want to detect four. And if it include instruction input and output, then we want to split. So just to make sure that you understand, uh, uh what happens uh, uh, the model i think it will because of i told you that we're gonna give it this right alongside uh i said this will be um this will be hash right it will be hash then it will be one and we're gonna have instruction just like so then it's gonna be one then this is gonna be output just like so right so you can imagine that we're gonna do this up to four because of that's what we said here so if we look at this code, we said that we're gonna say uh, four dot instruction. So this is where we ended. So this is where the model is supposed to continue generating. So we're gonna have something like four like so, right? And the model is what's gonna go, what's gonna continue to generate. So my assumption is then here on this code that we're currently looking at, essentially the model, the data that we get it's starting from here because of the model is going to continue uh, from here. Okay, it's going to continue from there. So that's why here, if the input and output detect, then we want to split, right? Um, I hope this makes sense. So uh, essentially, you can think of like, anyway, we don't want the seed because that's like uh, the seed from one to three, we don't want it. We just want from four to uh, or above it. All right so that's why here we take three plus one which is four then this is just zero then we're gonna continue like so um if the splitted elements inside this splitted data they don't actually equals to seven then we're gonna continue that means we're missing something if they are seven then what you're gonna do is that we're gonna extract the instruction input and we're gonna start the output so the input is possible that it does not necessarily have um it does not have uh, values here. So, 
so that's why we're saying if like this is equals to this then we're just gonna say it's an empty else we're gonna leave it as input um i hope that makes sense there will be some instructions that are less than three or maybe more than 50 150 we're just gonna discard those they are too small for this case and we're gonna continue and these um black list so what happens is that we have we're gonna say uh, for weight in this black list then we're gonna say find weight in string given this weight and instruction so it's gonna we're gonna pass this instruction then if any of these words occurs within the instructions we just gonna continue okay uh, I think like some some of these are based on trial and error. So the 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 authors like uh, tried some of these and they realized that these are, uh, are the outputs that they're getting and they, they don't want something related to these. Okay. Um, similarly, like if something start with write a program, they don't want that. They just continue. So I, I would like to just to say that these part of these things that are related to data cleaning, data engineering stuff they are literally based on like uh most of the time it's just the uh, trial and error you, you you see what the model will output and you don't like that then you just write an edge case for it in the code um okay and then similarly here we do the same and uh, also here it's just an edge case to filter out those um starting with nine english characters then we're just gonna say instructions then we append this dictionary inside this instructions just to make sure this instruction is an empty empty uh, list then what we do is that we're going to append this instruction input and output but the good thing is that now we have a clean data that we cleaned and it's looking good so you can tell now like this is one thing that i told you was that uh this uh alpaca data it's supposed to look like this so we can see that we remove those hashes and all of those other things so we remove the trailing spaces and all of this. So the data looks clean and this is how it's expected to look like. So which, um, which makes sense, the, I think the, the transformation that they're doing. So yeah, we just gonna go through uh, the responses that we generated and we're gonna return this list, which is holding a dictionary of something like this. Okay, so, um, so I'm just gonna scroll down this project is quite cool because I think like it's the code you can easily reuse uh, if like you want to produce something similar. So yeah, I think it's, it's pretty neat actually. Uh, so what we're doing here is that we have these instruction data. So uh, that's why here we take this instruction data and we add these in new instruction because of we know that we pretty much taking a list and then we just adding it up here. So just creating it these dictionaries a bunch of dictionaries inside there so we have uh, the length of the instruction data which is we're taking the length of this uh, then we going to look through the instruction data and what we're going to do is that we're going to take um, we're going to tokenize this instruction data entry okay which is instructions then uh, we're gonna create this pool of CPUs so that we can have a much faster processing. Then we going to map through this new instruction tokens against all the instructions tokens that we created. Uh, just to remind you, I feel like I covered this for a very long time. Uh, I just wanna show you where we did that. I think yeah, it was here. So if you can remember that, one, one of the things that we did was that this old instruction, which was the combination of the seed instruction data and the machine instruction data, we combined these and we created um, we created uh, tokens from, from all of these, right? So now what we are doing is that we're trying to compute the similarity uh, score from all the instruction tokens against the newly instruction token, right? That is coming from the instruction. Like I said that, the intuition behind this was just to say we don't want anything uh, that that has like uh, similarity score greater than seven, 70 or so. So this is mainly because uh, we want all the unique instructions. Uh, then we have these uh, score.measures, uh, right? 
and we calculate the yeah we calculate the similarity score and that's what we do um what we do here yeah, if if we're gonna continue if like the score is greater than this 0 0.7 otherwise we're gonna just increment the keep then after that we're just gonna say more similar instruction equals to more similar instructions average similarity score is gonna be that then we're gonna say machine instruction data which is gonna be machine instruction data entry yeah which was my assumptions right that's why there i told you that at this time point we don't have machine transit instruction data so that's why here yeah, we just i told you that it's just going to be an empty string as of that so uh just want to scroll up okay the machine instruction data is empty okay that's fine um just gonna scroll down so we are pending all of these inside the machine instruction data then all the instructions we are pending all of these instructions including the tokens and we just are taking the process so yeah i think then we're writing to to this region that json like i said that this region that json is not there i think they renamed this to alpaca data and this is essentially how the the data looks like but by the end of the day this is like um this is this is supposed to be 52k if i'm not mistaken 52k examples right uh let me check so yeah 200 260,000 divided by uh how many lines do we have one two three four five so it divided by five so it's gonna be 52k so that's cool um then we're just gonna write that into the output so now we have this data right here just to remind you like uh from the architecture perspective uh where is that architecture where is it here so we have we are still here so we have this 52k instruction following example so now that means that we need to come inside here so we need to get the lalama model and then we need to fine tune it based on the data that we have generated so far we have covered this code that generate this 52k inspection following example okay so now uh the script that uh we're gonna look into is this uh where is it is this script here uh this train uh script so i feel like we have covered uh most of the files inside here so i think this script will be the last one that we need to cover so let's get into it then so uh we have these default uh tokens because of using the llama so i think we're gonna need these uh then we have these templates here called the prompt dictionary so we can think of these essentially as uh before we pass the instruction towards the model we're gonna pass them like so so and we're gonna replace this with instructions okay um so the reason we have these two of these is because as we know that at some point we have uh, our data set like uh, the alpaca data set there are some cases whereby the input is empty and there are some cases where the input is is has some text so essentially this code that we're looking at it's gonna we're gonna have a condition to see if like where we don't have the input we're gonna use this template here otherwise we're gonna use this okay uh, we have these data class uh, whereby the default model is going to be the optic 125 million parameter model but we we're using lalam i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i think hugging face does not have the lalama model so i think that's why you can't necessarily like uh get it like this so the author had to get it from the working directory um so we have these uh data arguments which are going to provide the path where the data is then you have these training arguments. I think we're going to be using Adam in this case, optimizer. Then the uh, the maximum sequence length is going to be 512. Um, then these functions, I'd like to explain them as we go them as we go through the main function, so that we can see when they are getting used. If I explain them now, we don't get a better context of like when they are getting used, right? So I think if we go through them. Uh, when we go through the main function it will be much better so this is one of the main class so what it does is that it's going to load in the data given the data path 
I'm thinking it's going to load this uh, this final data that we transformed, which is the alpaca data set. So what it will do in this case is that it will create this uh, prompt input and prompt no input. So we're just getting there from our template. We're just getting that template uh, that I just showed you now, but input which is that we need to pass the instructions and which is which is what this code is doing. So as you can see that we're going to look through the examples and if like uh, we have, if like the input is not a question now, then we're going to use this template else we're just going to use the template with no input. So that I think this is quite straightforward. But because of we're doing a supervised model whereby we, are, we need some sort of like input and targets, so this is going to be the instructions will be uh, will be our 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 source. Then the target will be the output. So in this case, we are just gonna look through the, the 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 data dictionary, and we're gonna get the output, and we're gonna have this end of token uh, at the end of the output. Okay. So we have these two things: source and target. So this is called. Um, we call this function, which is called um, preprocess. We're gonna give it our source and target. So what it will do is that it will concatenate our source and our target, right? Uh, then it will try to loop through this concatenated source and target alongside the source and pass them through the string, right? For each, because of it, this is a for loop. So we then gonna call this tokenized function uh, given the strings and the tokenizer. So the string is going to be made up of this example and the source. So what will this tokenizer do is that it will tokenize these because of this is a string. So we have to loop through this because of we created um, we created these strings and we're just going to pass them inside here. Uh, then we get the text, right? Uh, then we're going to pair uh, with the longest, I think what it will do is that it will get the longest uh, text and what it will do is that all the shortest will then be paired with the zeros to meet, to match the longest, um, the longest sequence. Uh, that will, that's what it's going to do. Oh, the, the max length, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then we have this token tokenized list which we're gonna have to loop through then we're gonna get the tokenized input ids we're gonna assign them to labels and input ids then for us to get the length what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use this method whereby we're gonna sum all the non um non pitting tokens so this way we get to get the length of the of the sequence right um input ID sequences, I think. So then we return this dictionary here. So this is going to contain the input IDs, labels, input ID length, and label length. Uh, yep, that's what this is going to do. Um, then I'm just going to proceed. Uh, okay, this is just related to data processing. So uh, so what we do, uh, I think here is just gonna get the, the data label. So the self-explanatory. What I wanna explain is this uh, data collector for supervised data set. So this is essentially, uh, what it means is that it's gonna take a sequence of instances and collate them into a batch. This is for, for suitable, which is suitable for supervised model. So what it, how it does it is that it's gonna loop through all the instances that we're given. Uh, we're gonna see what instances are these in the shot. And we're gonna loop through for each instance, we're gonna get the key, which is gonna be input IDs or label. Then we're gonna have these input and labels. Then we're gonna pass this touch.nn utils. So essentially, this is a Python function uh, that takes a sequence of tensors and return a center where the sequences are padded to the same length along the first dimension. So uh, in this case, the batch dimension, I think. So that's what this will do. 
uh, then this is going to give us the input IDs. I think we're going to do the same thing with the labels. Uh, then we're going to retain these labels and input IDs. Okay. Um, then we have this make supervised data module. So we're just calling these um, these data classes. Okay, this class, this data class, and this class. Uh, let's see where we are. Okay, yes, we are here. So um, we're going to have this training data set, a train data set, which is our supervised data set. Uh, then we're going to have this data uh, collider for supervised data set, and we're going to pass them inside this dictionary. They will be used, uh, I think, in this train function. Okay. I hope you guys, I'm not confusing you. I uh, hope I'm uh, making things clearer for you guys um, so far. So what we have inside this train function, essentially we have this transformer. Uh, I think this is going to help us to get uh, a pre-trained model, which we have this model arguments and model name or path. Okay. Um, then we have this cache directory. Uh, I think this is for cached training arguments. Um, but anyway, we have these model and we have this tokenizer, which we gonna uh, we gonna it's gonna be coming from the same model name or path. Okay. Um, then if the tokenizer dot pad is none. So essentially, we need to make the model to have the same embedding length with the tokenizer. So we need to sync these. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we're going to call this smart tokenizer embedding resize. And uh, let's just look at this function. So what will this function do? Uh, essentially, it's going to make sure that the model is being resized to the token embedding. And then we're going to get the model uh, parameters. I think this is the input embedding and the output embedding. And then we're gonna try to average these uh, input embedding of these model. I think this is just to say uh, not including the new tokens. So we get the average. Then we use the average. Uh, as we use the average we use the input average embedding to assign to these special tokens. I think that's what this we do, right? So now we can think of the special tokens will have the average embeddings. Uh, so uh, that's that. Where were we? We were pretty much here. So this will return. Then if, uh, what is it? The, the lemma is in model argument or path then we're just going to make sure that the tokenizer has add these uh, special tokens. Like I said, I think because of the llama is not like the default model on hugging face or like we can't get it through like some sort of like a path. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but uh, so hugging face gives you these model IDs. So you can use a name to get a model from it. But in this case, because of its llama and it does not have that, privilege <laughs> so you have to like uh, download the model and have it on your path on your working directory and you have to reference it that way so that's why you have to do all of these um uh, uh tricks to kind of like make it work with hugging face uh uh workflow you know <laughs> uh, i hope this makes sense guys then we have this make supervised data module which is uh essentially is going to be that that um class that is going to create the supervised data set by concatenating the source and the target and we're going to have this data collider which is going to be responsible for uh it's going to collate the sequences into batch uh, suitable for input to a supervised learning model so that's that's what that data collider will do so uh what we do in this case we're gonna take the data module, we're gonna pass into this trainer and the model will be passed into this and we have this tokenizer. Uh, I'm just gonna do that. Then we're gonna call the train, save the state and we have this save uh, model for HF trainer. I think here we're gonna 
Is this a function that's saving to CPU? Yeah, I think this is it. So yeah, save, save. Essentially what it's gonna do, it's gonna make sure that it's gonna take all the states uh, and throw all the values to CPU, right? And this CPU state dictionary will then be saved. Uh, then we're gonna delete the save. So I think this is, we're just saving all of these states in, in this CPU. Uh, I think that's what this does. Let me see, uh, what did the author say? Collects the state dictionary dump to disk. Yeah, I think that's what it, that's what it does because we, we reference in the CPU. Anyway, that will do it guys. I feel like we pretty much wrapped it up um, with this. Uh, I feel like this is quite reusable. Uh, you can reuse it for your, like if you wanna like uh, go into train, fine tune like, a Llama model or some pretend model, you can use this technique uh, that uh, obviously they used here. Uh, obviously, like some of these are non commercial usage, so you have to be careful there. Uh, just use it for research, I think. Um, but yeah, I think that's all from my side. Uh, I, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, bye.